it's really about priorities. So I always say, make health your big rocks. And if you put them first, we want to be motivated internally. So it has to be really important for you to make that strong commitment with yourself. Shelly Uber, a seasoned fitness expert with over 10 years of experience, has empowered over a thousand women to achieve their physical goals and transform their lives. She is dedicated to helping women conquer insecurities through effective workouts and lifestyle changes. Coming from a very dark place mentally, physically, how much working out and taking care of my body helped me to feel better in zero energy, zero focus. I went to having energy to enjoy my life, energy to do things, energy to study, to work. And I thought, well, this feeling that it gave me made me feel so happy and everything. This is a feeling I want to share with the world. It is incredible to see that so many of you are tuning into our show. We've just hit 700 subscribers, a milestone that fills us with gratitude. From the beginning, we couldn't have predicted such rapid growth. So thank you for being part of this journey. And I promise that we will continue to raise the bar. In the summer of 2024, we plan to elevate our production, bring on even more diverse and global guests, and deliver content like never before. And your best way to support us is to hit the subscribe button. Thank you, and please enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Another episode of the Jazzy Podcast. And today we're so honored and excited to have Shelly here with thank us. Thank you. Thank you, Jazzy. Just at the beginning of the podcast, I would like to take the moment to acknowledge you that you always bring amazing energy every time that we come across each other at yoga class or outside of yoga class. And also that you're the person that led me on the path that I'm now taking the yoga teacher training. So... Thank you. Oh, wow. That's a big compliment. Thank you so much. And I say thank you that I may be here today. <laughs> Definitely. And I think that myself and a lot of audience out there were curious about Shelly because Shelly seemed to online very present and posting a lot of meaningful content. And we're curious and personally me today, I'm super excited to dive a bit more into about your value bring to the world. So I would like to know that, can you tell us about your background and what inspired you to start your journey in fitness and life coaching for women? Okay, thank you. So what brought me into it is a more personal interest because when I was like a teenager, I used to hate sports. I used to skip like every gym class I had like a reason not to go because I um, tore my ECL mm -hmm. so I had knee weak knees and I just didn't like going right. to the gym classes I was the one who was always picked last like that was me <laughs> so I had a not so positive relationship with sports or whatever um, and then I got into a very toxic relationship which made my self-worth really go down and I uh, at some point I just stopped eating because I thought I wasn't worth it and I didn't matter and it only declined and uh, luckily I got out of the toxic relationship quite quickly but then I went to high school and I had no idea where I wanted to go in life so I just pick one uh, what do you, how do you call it? Like degree? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, degree. Right. Yeah. yeah. And was in event management. Uh, but as soon as I went there, I, yeah, I, I didn't have any friends or whatever. I, I thought to myself, okay, I need to make some friends. So uh, one of the girls from the new class said, oh, I'm going to the gym. Uh, and I thought, okay, there's maybe a way to make new friends. So okay, I'll, I'll, even though I don't like sports at all, I'll just go. And that was my first encounter with the gym. <laughs> but remember, I was still like very, very skinny, uh, not in a mentally well place. Like I was, I had no energy. I was very uh, insecure. Um, I, I literally starved myself. 
But okay, I went to the gym because I wanted to make friends. I wanted to become in a better place. Well, the first time I walked into the gym, it was like very, I had no idea what I should do. It was like one jungle, right? You came in and like all these people, super fit and whatever. And you're like, oh my God, I don't even like sports. What am I doing here? Yeah. But okay, I continued because I was on a mission mm-hmm. to make friends. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And so we started going once a week and I thought, okay, uh, for the first time, I had a positive experience with working out or moving my body because I could take it on my own pace. Mm -hmm. Like there was no gym teacher forcing me to kick balls or whatever, because I could do whatever I wanted on my own pace. So I slowly thought like, okay, maybe this is something I can do and move my body in a more fun way. Mm-hmm. So I started going once a week and then it went to twice a week. And then the friend I came, uh, I went with to the gym, she quit, but I was like, okay, well now I found something, so yeah. I'm going to continue. But, and I also noticed like I had no energy because I wasn't like properly nourishing myself and feeding myself. So I thought, okay, I need to gain some information or I need to do something differently because I don't want to feel so weak all the time and insecure. Mm -hmm. I also want to feel strong and confident and be able to move my body in ways I want to and not be limited by my body, but I want it to be a way to experience life fully. So I started to look up nutrition and uh, how do I train? Like what Mm -hmm. exercises do I need to do? And gradually, I uh, felt like the event management course wasn't Mm -hmm. what I wanted in life. So I thought, okay, I want to do something with sports. For the first time, I thought like, okay, this is a a path that fits me. Mm -hmm. So I quit after one year with that degree, with a high school degree. Mm -hmm. And I went to to a bachelor in sports science. And that's where I even built myself further um, because... Then I went from anorexia, which is like really being underweight, to orthorexia. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's like health obsession. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that's uh, you are really restricting yourself to only healthy foods. Uh, You want to work out like every day because otherwise you feel like you failed. So that was the other side of the spectrum. So that was still not healthy, even though I thought I was doing a good thing but I was still like super obsessive uh, working out every day a lot of stress on my body mm-hmm. I also lose my, I lost my menstrual cycle for example mm-hmm. which as a woman is a reflection of your general health mm-hmm. so and why is that because you're very stressed yeah like or... the female body has two functions mm-hmm. one is to survive mm-hmm. like being alive that's the right. m- most important thing right. and the second one is reproduction mm-hmm. But if the first one, surviving, is mm-hmm. in danger, mm-hmm. it won't give any attention oh. to the second one. That right. function will, it will shut down. Right. Yeah. So that's what happened to my body. It was mm-hmm. under a lot of stress, even though mm-hmm. I didn't experience it mentally, mm-hmm. but my body was. Mm-hmm. So there was a whole journey where I gained more information about nutrition and I worked out up to a point where I was like every day and super healthy eating um, and I was doing this sports science degree Mm -hmm. and during that whole course I also noticed like well I'm not really progressing anymore like I'm training every day but I'm still tired and I don't see any progress so from hating sports to training every day I went down again to only training three to four times a week Mm -hmm. then I noticed like Okay, now I'm making even more progress, even though I thought I was doing the perfect thing. Mm -hmm. Doing too much of a thing is also not a good thing. So I slowed a bit down. I started to eat a bit more fun foods, uh, Mm -hmm. be a little nicer to myself. And in that time, I also started uh, helping others with their training and nutrition Mm -hmm. because I gained so much knowledge. And I already noticed that from coming from a very dark place mentally, physically, how much 
working out and taking care of my body help me to feel better in general. Like from being zero confidence, zero energy, zero focus, I went to having energy to enjoy my life, energy to do things, energy to study, to work. And I thought, well, this feeling that it gave me, it made me feel so happy and everything. This is a feeling I want to share with the world. Right. I want to share with other females. So I want to help others achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, doing personal training. I worked with uh, clients one-on-one -on -one in the gym, uh, which I also really loved. Um, and then after the bachelor degree, I thought like, okay, I, I love this so much. Uh, I still want to go deeper in the science be behind working out and nutrition. So that's when I started my master's degree in human movement sciences mm -hmm. with a specialization in sports science. And that's where we went like really deep into the science of the body, like really cell level. You went into right. like the, what, what really literally happens when a muscle contracts and you mm -hmm. had to know uh, out of your head, like how much ATP is generated in, in one crap cycle. If you eat one carbohydrate, for example, you had to calculate everything. Right. Uh, so that was really, really specific. Um, and that's also not necessary if you want to have the people I want mm -hmm. to help because that's more like top sport level right but what I really felt during my whole journey is like I want to help general uh, in general most females feel better mm -hmm. because in the time I worked as a personal trainer I heard so many things about other women who for example avoid going to the beach because they don't feel confident in their bodies or they avoid going to a clothing store. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel insecure. They also have irregular cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, they are bloated every day. And mm -hmm. a lot of those things are normalized, which don't have to be normalized because it's mm -hmm. not normal to feel that way as women. Mm -hmm. You can feel so much better. Mm -hmm. uh, where you think you're life maybe is now like an eight yeah. uh, actually it is a six but you don't know it's a six because you never experienced how it is to be at like an eight or nine or even right. a ten there's so much more potential in your body than you think but there is not so much yeah information on how to achieve it how you have to work out how you have to eat but also how you have to manage stress and how you have to sleep and how also how you have to talk to yourself because it's all um, yeah. how you feed yourself. It's not only the food you put into your mouth, but also the thoughts you place in your head and the people you speak with and the way you talk with yourself. So that has been like a whole journey for yeah. uh, which started as I was like 16 mm -hmm. and now I'm 26 and in the past Four years, um, I also started coaching because I was doing the personal training. But then I felt like this isn't covering everything yes. because you work for like one hour with a client. But right. to really achieve optimal health or just good health in a sustainable way, right. you have to know how to manage the whole 24 hours of your day. Yes. So it's also nutrition, it's also stress management, it's also sleep. Absolutely. And that's what I wanted. I thought like, okay, I need to do more. And this is what exactly what I can cover right. when I do coaching. So yes. I coach you for the whole 24 hours. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And I think that's quite a unique offering. And with that said, I feel like myself and the audience out there, we now have an overview of how you get into what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? which I think is truly incredible. And Maybe a lot of us are familiar with Steve Jobs. He says this quote that in life, we can only looking back that what have happened in the past, then we can connect in the dots backwards like that. Mm -hmm. So what was the pivotal moment that made you decide to focus on empowering women through fitness? Was mm -hmm. it the because you gained so much joy or because the first friend or client that you helped? Yeah, the pivotal moment. I can't recognize there was like one specific moment, but I 
think it started with that I felt so insecure, so less energy, so fatigued all the time. I was so, I was like, I think like 14 kg lighter than I'm now. And mm -hmm. I still thought like, I'm not thin enough. So I was like, okay, this isn't it, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something has to change. Right. Um, and I think when you say like, when you work with clients, that is something that kept on like, uh, saying like, yes, this is the, your right path. This is mm -hmm. what you should go. Because every yeah. time someone told me like, whoa, uh, I feel so much better. I, for example, I, it's for the first time I feel confident in a dress or whatever. Like, whoa, yeah, this is what it is about. It's not about losing five kg. It is about feeling better in your skin, feeling more confident, um, feeling a more patient mom, being a more patient mom or a better partner or a better friend because it's all helping you thrive more in life right so i think every time i hear a success story i think yeah this is what why i'm doing what i'm doing mm -hmm. yes it gives me yeah. so much fulfillment mm -hmm. totally and, yeah and i assume that you share a lot of them on your instagram right yeah so and they're all in dutch they're all in dutch. <laughs> exactly i can only guess yeah yeah right and personally, I'm curious, and I believe that I'm asking for a lot of, mm -hmm. of us out there. So not only for women, but also for men as well, right? And I consider myself one of those uh, <laughs> guilty ones that, okay, if you work and you have your own passion, and then you go to the yoga studio, and how do we have time to, okay, number one, maybe sign up a gym or... Mm -hmm working out from from home, mm -hmm. right? Do you have any tips or any solutions or? How I visualize time is as if you have a vase. If you have a big vase and you have right. to fill it with different rocks. Right. Like, so you have big rocks, smaller rocks and sand. Mm -hmm. So if you put in first the sand and then you want to do the smaller rocks, but then the, the big rocks don't fit anymore, right? True. Yeah. It's full. So. Yeah. But that's often how most people manage their time. Right. Uh, it's really about priorities. So yes. I always say make health your big rocks. Mm -hmm. And if you put them first and then you see like, okay, I still have the smaller rocks. So that's maybe for everyone is different, right? right. Uh, maybe work or going with friends or going out for dinner or right. whatever, doing uh, shopping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally the sand will flow through right right because the truth is your agenda even though you plan nothing right. i guarantee you at the end of the week it's full yeah it's always yeah, it always totally, happens totally, so totally. yeah you have to really pick your big rocks so right. for me health is a big rock whenever okay. i sit on sunday i look at my week and i put in like when am i going to work out every day and if exactly <clears throat> precise to the minute yeah which which time what am i going to do exactly because this is what works mm -hmm. because if you have to think about it in a moment you're not going to come up with it or you say like oh, i'm going to the gym three times a week and then it's monday you think well i still have six days left right so tomorrow's not and it's tuesday and like, oh, well I still have five days right. and then it's already wednesday like Phew, okay maybe now i have to go but well yeah. and then it yeah. goes further Right, or as right, you say, right. I go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, set times, and you also have to be strict with yourself totally. because you make uh, agreement with yourself. Like I want mm -hmm. to uh, work on my health, then you should go. And right. yeah, if you do it that way, then you're building a system for yourself, which is like fill proof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because we, th this is like a, a quote by James Clear. I, I know, I don't know what's exactly, but it's not it's like, uh, our outcomes are produced by the quality of our systems mm -hmm. or the, our habits are totally. made or break with the quality of our system. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a system for yourself. Like mm -hmm. how am I going to do the yes. working out and also right. really make it a priority. Right. So besides planning your week on Sunday and <laughs> put things into the calendar, which may have a great system. What else would you share with the audience out there on staying disciplined? 
saying discipline. You have three types of commitments. Mm -hmm. So you have the strong commitment. And that's when uh, I say to you, like, uh, we make, we, for example, with the, the podcast, right. and I made a strong uh, commitment with you, like, we're going to do the podcast, I'll be there, no matter what. Right. That's a strong commitment. Nice. And you have, like, uh, a weak commitment. That's when you say, okay, I'm going to print this if the printer works. Right. <coughs> My bad. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then you already have like the doubt in the sentence. Right. And then the last commitment is like the, the criminal commitment, they uh -huh. call it. And it's like, uh -huh. yeah, I will think about it. Or okay. it's like you give yourself an escape. Yes. yes. So with if you really want to work on your health, you have to make a strong commitment mm -hmm. with yourself. Right. Like, okay, am I going to fully do it? Because... Uh, of course, with health, like there are so many factors that influence your health. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the people around you, like if people around you are smokers and they like to party every weekend, stay up late, then you're also going to have a harder time to eat healthy, uh, wake up early. So uh, your environment is a really big predictor of success. Right. Um, but also then I still believe it's also a big part. Yeah. It's discipline because if yes. you really want something, uh, I always I like to exaggerate, exaggerate a bit yes. like, okay, if you really want to work out and I would put a gun to your head, like 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, mm -hmm. I bet you go work out every day. Right. Like, no, yes. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. Because then you feel so yeah. much pressure. Okay. Yeah, but that, yeah. of course that's also not the, the best motivation because yeah. then it's like externally and we want to be motivated internally. Right. So it has to be really important for you to make that strong commitment with yourself. So you go out every day. Right. Yeah. And I noticed for myself, like I know how weak I felt when I didn't work out, when I didn't take care of myself. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, I know how much better I feel when I do. So, okay, I made this strong commitment with myself. Health is my priority. I see. And by the way, I have heard about that gun to the head <laughs> uh, example before in self-development. However, I do believe that when someone thinks like that a lot and maybe gradually that might turn to a habit, mm -hmm. right? For example, working out or read a couple of pages a day. Mm -hmm. um, so with that said, we talked about some challenges or how to overcome mm. challenges when it comes to staying healthy or committed with their health, right? Yeah. So could you share some key challenges that you faced when building your own business Okay. and mm -hmm. how you overcome them? Yeah. Um, with building a business, well, I, I started building my business like four years ago and I was very uh, luckily to have a business coach when I first started so that really really helped me because right. um, you have like, no idea what you're doing right so yes. there's no yeah there is a business school but if you <laughs> just come from a regular school and I started studied sports science mm -hmm. they teach you how to be personal trainer for example right. and not how to own a business yeah so i was like okay i want to do something for myself but where do i start so i was lucky to have a business coach for the first uh, two years mm -hmm. and that really helped me because whenever i had a struggle like for example how do i start mm -hmm. like how do i get clients how do i profile myself how do i market myself mm -hmm. how do i manage my money i could turn to him like for answers so right. that made it way easier mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> that's yeah I had it for business but that's also what I exactly do with health like also right. people don't know how to do it but if you ask for help it's way easier yes exactly yeah so that's what I did yeah. with my business as well mm -hmm. um did I have like really really big challenges that I overcame there's no one particular I can think of it. It was more, I think like building a business is more of a 
challenge with yourself. Right. So you're, what often comes up is like, uh, am I capable enough? Am I doing the right thing? You mm -hmm. really, well, that's what I uh, experienced. I, a lot of self-doubt you had mm -hmm. to overcome and right. uh, look differently at things because, um, yeah, as I said, like school doesn't teach you how to build a business. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of people who also say, like, if you say, like, I'm starting a business, they say, oh, are you sure? Because it's, uh, you don't have any security. Are you going to make enough money? And then, and then, and then, and they mm -hmm. start testing you, right? Yeah. Uh, so I started to see, again, see it as a way, like, how bad do I want it? Mm -hmm. And I shifted my mindset that way. Uh, and then I got more, yeah, different things like I, I scaled my business and I had to organize an event for for example for 200 women and I was like oh my god I have to give a speech how I'm going to do that and um, what if my message doesn't come across or if I say the wrong thing but then I was as I did more of those things it came more naturally and right. you start building the confidence and like uh, literally gathering proof what you're doing is is working so i think mm -hmm. that's the the biggest ongoing challenge right they say success is like snow or snowball rolling from the top <laughs> of a mountain right it's like um through time it builds out the momentum and maybe just tiny piece of snowflake and then at the bottom mountain is gonna cause yeah. like a um, big disaster or yeah. uh, significant impact mm -hmm. right and I think really personally, when it comes to building this podcast, and like I just mentioned to you before, I, when I was finding what I like to do, I was trying all different kinds of content, right? So not only podcasts and other things as well. However, I think when we do a lot of trial and errors and then we can know that, oh, this is the path for me, this feels right. And from that, we can shift our focus on, okay, this is the only thing I do, or this is the time that I'm spending most of my time with, which is, uh, and also what you said, how bad do you want? It reminds me of, you know, you are in black, um, <laughs> the black member mindset from Kobe Bryant. Essentially, he's uh, one of the best basketball players of all time. And there are interviews when people ask him, how do you stay focused? Or what's your work ethic like? And he said, everything he does and every single day, it has to be about becoming the best basketball player on the planet. And if it's not related with that, he doesn't do it, right? Yeah. So it's also about the focus, about yeah. uh, saying no to many things. Even uh, maybe it sounds awesome <coughs> or it's probably going to be a lot of fun. But again, really, I feel discipline is the theme that come up here yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I guess... Um, about uh, what, what also uh, is also key into, for example, uh, becoming healthy, but also staying it, right. is also really about how you see yourself and mm -hmm. about your identity. So, to come back on like the previous question, like, do you have any tips for success? Right. For example, I think uh, Kobe Bryant lives this, but um, if I ask you the question, like, if you would visualize um, a person who likes uh, crisps and sitting on the couch, like what kind of body does he have? Mm -hmm. Like not fit, right? Right, yeah, but couch if, potato. Right? Yeah, but if I say like, uh, think of an athlete, mm -hmm. then you already have like a vision, right? Like right. someone maybe who has abs and yes. works out every day. Right. So it is really also about how you see yourself, mm -hmm. about your identity. And mm -hmm. this is where true transformation happens. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in my work, uh, I really focus on achieving long-term success. Mm -hmm. So that's more about transformation rather than just implementing some food rules or right. uh, learning about nutrition or learning yes. following a training schedule because that's always temporary but we want sustainable mm -hmm. change. Yeah. So that's shifting your self-belief and self-identity. Mm -hmm. For example, for me, I see myself as a disciplined person who is entrepreneurial, who uh, is healthy. So for me, it is normal. I do those things. Right. I don't even think about it. Yeah. 
And um, I see myself as someone with a growth mindset. So I see challenges as ways to learn new things and face and overcome things. So if you really want to improve your health, it is also like, who do I need to be as a person? For example, Kobe Bryant, who do I need to be like the best basketball player ever? Mm-hmm. It's okay. What behavior does the best basketball player have? Well, right. he says no to parties and no to alcohol, right? Because that's the behavior. Uh, and he gets up and train at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. That's also the, it always starts with your identity and then right. a lower level is like behavior and then how it affects your environment. Right. It's the psychological, it's like a seven layers of the <coughs> Marslow pyramids, right? Which is like. Um, well, this is um, this is the pyramid of not Maslow. This is Bateson. Mm-hmm. It's a different theory, but okay. it's like the same. It's a similar model. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the top is like uh, identity, so how right. you see yourself, and then underneath is like your beliefs. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you believe? So, if yeah. you, uh, from for me, like I believe health is wealth, mm-hmm. or health is like the most important thing. Yes. Um, and then you have behavior, so then mm-hmm. how how you behave in totally. the with the world around you, yes. and then it affects your environment, mm-hmm. so it affects also the people around you, uh, and that's like also a very good model. Yes. But that's for behavior change, and that's right. what what I do with coaching. Right. I help people change their behavior mm-hmm. because everything we do is behavior: how we yes. how we talk, how we eat, how we sleep, how we. Uh, interact with other people so totally. yeah nice nice what you just mentioned one word is transformation right so do you have any specific fitness programs or routines that are particularly popular among the women that you coach or you have helped them mm-hmm. gone through a transformation <clears throat> yeah so in all the world in all the years i work with women I figured out my own method mm-hmm. that really helps achieve this transformation. Right. And that it has been like combination of uh, gaining knowledge, but also my background uh, as a human movement scientist. Uh, but I also did like NLP. I don't mm-hmm. know if you ever heard of it. Neurolinguistic programming. Yeah, neurolinguistic. Yes. And psychology, behavior change. Uh, and combining all that knowledge mm-hmm. and the working experience and interaction right. I have with people, I developed my own method. I call it the, the Thrive Method. And that is mm-hmm. focused on the shifting of your identity, mm-hmm. uh, behavior change, nice. integrated with a um, sustainable way to work on health, to uh, eat in line with your goals, because... You have so many different diets, but not every diet is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you want sustainable results, you also have to do something that is sustainable. Because if the method isn't sustainable, the results aren't sustainable as well. Yeah. So I also developed my own uh, approach to nutrition, Mm -hmm. uh, which makes it sustainable for each individual. Because also not everything works for everyone. Totally. And yeah, so I have in my method, it's like a red line (coughs) we follow, but it's not the same for everyone. It's not like a 12 week program we follow, but I have like general guidelines. We always start with the identity shifting, uh, really getting to know yourself. Like, how do you behave? What do you do? What do we need to change? Why isn't it working now? And then make an action plan. Like, how, How are we going to achieve it then? How we are going to work towards your desired outcome and then we build like a really strong fundament in health because i see health as the base of a good life Mm -hmm. and we want your health to be really stable for the same reason if you were building a castle Mm -hmm. you want to foundation yeah you want to have a strong foundation you can't build it on loose sand right Mm -hmm. you have to have a thick layer of cement so that's how we're going to build health so that you always also in stressful times, you have a strong base to fall back on. Because what I often see, like during stressful times, 
people let go of their health and everything that's good. Yeah, you stop going to yoga because you think, oh, I'm too busy. Yeah, then you put the big rocks out <laughs> and throw them out, <laughs> whereas you need the big rock the most. Um, and when you have a really solid foundation, mm -hmm. then I try to optimize health for the people who are into that. So we look at, for example, uh, gut health or how you can eat for more focus or how you can nourish your body throughout your cycle. Mm -hmm. So what nutrition do you need when you're ovulating or menstruating? Mm -hmm. Because women's body change every 28 to 30 days we right. have a cycle and when we have the identity change the behavior change we have the strong fundament in health then you can take charge of your health and also happiness because you know exactly what you have to do to feel and be your best right. and yes. then you can thrive in life right. and even enjoy everything more because that's what it's all about it's not just uh, looking a certain way or weighing a certain number it's about how you feel in your in your own body and in yes. your own skin yes. so that you're not insecure when you walk around on the beach like oh uh, does this bikini make me look fat no then you start enjoying the beach and people around you and that's what life is about yes and so many women are still in that first situation mm -hmm. and i really want them to be in the second situation Right. So that's why I, that's my mission in life to make the world a better place. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of listeners now, they are <laughs> excited and they want to get in touch with you or they want to find out more about the program. How can they reach you? I'm on Instagram, um, Shelly Webba. <laughs> Um, my company is called Nourish, Train, Drive, and I'm since three months. I'm also on LinkedIn. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's all in Dutch. But I'm thinking about also starting maybe an English uh, Instagram account to share information nice. or do more with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and I also have a website which is also in Dutch. <laughs> Thrive Club, but I do coach women in English as well because the program is perfectly uh, doable in in English. I can easily translate, so that's no uh, no big deal. Okay, yeah. great. So one last question is one of my favorite questions. <laughs> So assume now is the end of the world. Okay. And... <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> exactly. So everything you have put out there on the internet. Yeah. As amazing the websites. Yeah. And LinkedIn. Yeah. The they are awesome. <laughs> Even the English one. They are absolutely awesome, but they're all gone. Now you have this tiny piece of sticky note as well, but this big. Mm-hmm. And you have a pen, and this is what you can write on the sticky notes. Yeah, just one sentence is what you can leave for the future generations for them okay. to learn or remember you off, or the message you want to give to mm. them. And what would that be? Mm. Good question. What would I? given to the world I think I would say a better world starts with yourself mm -hmm. so if you try to be a little bit better or um, I wake up every day being grateful of okay thankful I'm thankful it's a new day and I look in small ways to make it a bit more positive so right. Uh, smile to strangers, ask to the cashier how they're doing, give a compliment to someone you see. Um, so if you find little ways to make the day of someone else better, mm -hmm. I would say do that. Even the, the, small, the small things in life eventually turn out to be the big things. Like, yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I would say. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time. 
I really enjoyed this conversation. And for everybody out there, make sure to go check out Shelly's content and Instagram, LinkedIn as well. And me personally, I'm super excited to see more of your content in English. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesse, for having me. Yes, and I hope we get to do another episode soon. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> We'd love to. Awesome. <laughs> then on yoga. <laughs> yes, exactly. How yoga transformed my life or lives. Yeah, totally. Yeah.